This one is called Every Anime Studio Explained in 17 Minutes. Let's get it. Studio Toei was founded in 1948, making it one of the oldest animation studios, and it's responsible for some of the biggest anime ever, like Dragon Ball, One Piece, yeah. Sailor Moon, and much, much more. Because they've been around for so long, they have a history that I can't entirely cover, but I'll try. Toei actually helped popularize trends like Magical Girls with Sailor Moon, or Super Mecha with Mazinger like Z, and Toei Animation can generally be a mixed bag. Because they take on so many projects and have many different teams working on different productions, the quality can vary wildly. Yep. I mean, you've seen One Piece, right? Like, bro, these long-running shonen series back in the day, right? You didn't have these seasonal formats. I think the way that My Hero Academia or let's say even Bleach, The Thousand Year Blood War or Jujutsu Kaisen, these quote-unquote modern shonen that's getting animated right now, their approach is, I think, a way better because... The more because before back in the day, you would have hundreds and hundreds of episodes. The pacing issues, the faster that the anime got caught up with the manga, the more that you have to delay. In like One Piece, I think one of the most egregious things that happens is like after the time skip in like Dress Rosa or something, I heard the anime just gets so so delayed. It is absolutely insane. In fact, people even say that Naruto, yes, there's a lot of filler. And people used to hate on that shit before, but now people have this mindset of, you know what? I take those failures because those failures made the hype episodes actually concise and jam packed of content rather than having a, like, you start the episode, you have a fucking three minute recap, you have a two minute intro, then you have more other bullshit and the actual media content is like only 10 minutes or so. If you see that Toei is animating something, you should check the actual staff involved with that series, and that usually is a better indicator of the actual quality that that series will have. I mean, just look at the inconsistency in One Piece. Yeah. Some of the episodes are jaw-dropping, but some are just like... And like, yeah, right? Like, what the fuck is this? Even I think Dragon Ball Super, there was like the movies that was really pretty decent, but then the animated episodes of the movie were really fucking bad. It's just like, they min-max so hard. Whenever there's like these key animators that work on specific episodes, then you know those are going to be the good ones. But like, when you don't, then you have Microsoft Paint. Eh. But one of the best things about Toei Animation is that their workers are unionized, meaning that they oh. are generally treated amazingly compared to other anime studios. From what I I wonder how many other studios are also unionized. I, I'm surprised to hear this from Japan. I understand working on One Piece is a pretty smooth and positive experience. Studio Madhouse was founded in 1972, and oh is well boy. regarded in the anime community for the Madhouse that eventually turned into MAPPA. Here we go. Their sheer quantity of quality shows that they produce. This is mainly because the former founder and CEO, Masio Mariyama, had connections to people like Satoshi Kon, Mamu Hosoda, and Masaki Yuasa, some of Crazy the animators? best anime directors, and they were able to consistently pump out bangers. They've made a ton of insanely high quality projects like Perfect Blue, Death Note, One Punch Man, cool. Hunter Hunter, and even just recently, Free Ren. Unfortunately, in 2010, a big- Oh! Well, Madhouse did Frieden, huh? Because, like, I thought that everyone just packed up a Madhouse and left to MAPPA to make their own shit because of the working conditions, but... I mean, shit, Frieden was a pretty damn good anime. I, I haven't... I wonder what the conditions are there right now. Fortunately, in 2010, a big split happened between Madhouse, and they lost a lot of their core staff. In addition, yeah. Mariyama left to make MAPPA, which really hurt Madhouse. Based? Right? They fucking left. So it's like, again... In the beginning, everything is good. Then, like, it gets too big, and the sh and then and then corporate structure it starts oozing in, and everything is so fucked. And then people leave, and the same shit. The people are are people leave. If people leave Map, I wonder what kind of studio they're gonna make then. House in the long run. We'll get to that later. But surprisingly, they seem to have rebuilt themselves, and it looks like they are still capable of. It's the opposite now with Map and Madhouse. Madhouse is like the good place now, and Map is old Madhouse during the peak of its shittiness. That is interesting. They learned. People left and made their own shit. And Madhouse learned, oh fuck. We need to change stuff up. So then, people need to leave MAPPA. And then go somewhere else. And that studio will do well for a bit. And then, MAPPA realizes, oh shit, we gotta fix our stuff. And then MAPPA gets good. And then the new studio that left, you know, that turns bad. And then those people have to leave. What the fuck is this cycle, man? of pumping out amazing shows while still grabbing industry veterans as shown with free rent and honestly i doubt that fact will change in the future because of their legacy however just like other anime studios madhouse oh, has had problems good. with overworking their employees in 2019 a production assistant said that he worked over 393 hours in a single month that what the fuck assuming 
the nine to five salary co salary man, right? Nine to five. What is that? Forty hours a week, right? Eight hours a day, five days a week, forty times average of four weeks a month, hundred sixty hours a week. This dude is doubling that and more. That's insane. And I bet he's not getting paid overtime either. And he ended up joining a union to actually sue Madhouse for the overtime. Nice. Studio Ghibli is probably the most widely recognized anime studio in the world, and that's for good reason. Only yeah, Miyazaki, Hayao, just movies, right? It's just iconic. It's pretty much just like, I don't know if this is a good comparison to make, but it's like the Disney for Asians. Only two anime movies have ever won Oscars, and both belong to Spirit Away and The Boy and the Heron, respectively. In 1985, Miyazaki and Takahata broke off from Toei Animation to form uh -huh. Ghibli, along with Toshio Suzuki. It's worth noting that Hayao Miyazaki is pretty much the face of Studio Ghibli. Every the only thing that I know about him is that he said that anime is a mistake, and he really fucking hates AI, I think. Every work with his name attached seems to garner a ton more attention. Also, if you're wondering why a lot of his movies feature airplanes and casualties of war, because he grew up during the war times? His brother's company actually manufactured rudders for planes in World War II. Kind Jesus. of explains why The Wind Rises was made. After writing his breakthrough manga, Nazca of the Valley of the Wind, he ended up directing Ghibli's first ever movie, an adaptation of that same manga. And it was a huge success, and this kickstarted the studio's legacy. Ghibli in general is known for their high quality. This is called Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. But this looks like Princess Mononoke or that something same to me, manga. right? Ah, oh, fuck. The, the girl over here, does it not look like Princess Mononoke or something? You, you know that? What, what is that movie? Where it's just like Spirit Forest. It, it's like Asian. It's like, it's not Pocahontas, but it's like a similar theme of like, you know, humans trying to interfere with natural energies and all that shit happening. But the designs, right? It, it, it looks really the same, right? These two girls, right? The girls look similar, right? I know it's different, but the designs of the girl, this is her, these two, very familiar. And it was a huge success, and this kickstarted the studio's legacy. Ghibli in general is known for their high quality animation, background art, and extremely memorable music by Joe Hisashi. Ghibli films are yes. mostly hand drawn using watercolor and acrylic paints, and most of their movies use traditional animation methods. Where and people love the way that they animate food in the Ghibli films. Each frame is drawn and colored by hand. Because of this, their movies give off almost a cozy European vibe that have a lot of emphasis on the nature and backgrounds in each scene. I mean, seriously, look at the backgrounds in Ghibli films. They look wow. amazing. People you know what backgrounds look like now? It's just shitty CGI, bro. You can't, every one of these faces are gonna just be a, a CGI, bro. They're just copy pasted, just templates. We usually regard Spirit Away or Totoro as their best work, as they have the most critical acclaim and popularity. Personally, I think Howl's Moving Castle, Grave of the Fireflies, and Princess Mononoke are yeah, their best work. Exactly, Princess Mononoke, this design of the girl, right? It's really familiar with uh, the Nausicaa one, right? The girl design anyways best works. Witch Studio is a new studio founded in 2020. Witch Studio is pretty good, right? I think Witch Studio is like a pretty reputable studio and they're proven to come out good products, right? 12 by Production IG. The studio was essentially created for their first project, Which Attack was? on Titan. That's crazy. That is insane. The studio was created for the first project being Attack on Titan, meaning they were going in fully aware that this needs to be like an ace fucking team. This is an insane title, and we're going to create a brand new studio. It's almost like the Avengers forming to make Attack on Titan, because, you know, you, you can't just have random people doing this shit. It's, it's like a huge name. Yes, literally one of the best anime of all time was Witch Studio's first project. And they are also responsible for some of the biggest anime, like Spy Family and Vinland oh. Saga's first season. Which studio That's is huge. known for their amazing action sequences with dynamic camera angles. And a lot of this can be attributed to Tetsuro Araki, the action. Tetsuro Araki. Oh man, look at him. Making that post, Sasageo bro. Okay, this is the legend. This is the legend that's responsible for all this. And pacing he gave to Attack on Titan's first few seasons has created some of the best action sequences I've ever seen. They've also reportedly started work on a One Piece reboot, which is low-key crazy considering one- That's insane. That is insane. And goddamn. One of these days, man, if this shit releases, I must start, because, like, I don't even know when I fucking stop watching One Piece or getting caught up, but, like, this is a good opportunity. When One Piece reboots, bro, we fucking, <laughs> maybe we can be a Shonen channel. One Piece hasn't even finished, but 
whatever. On one hand, it's insane to think that they are working on so many projects, but on the other hand, this is the anime industry, so we can imagine what these animators are actually going through. Hell. And in 2015, an interview was done with Naganuma, a staff member at Studio Wit. When they asked about his experience, he said, it's a battlefield. Basically, <laughs> what you see on Attack on Titan is what I see at Studio <laughs> yeah, It's compared to working condition of Studio Wit as a motherfucker trying to survive against the Titans, bro. I guess what Studio also just shitty, shitty work conditions, huh? Yo, Wit. One comrade falls after another. <laughs> what, what is going on at Studio Wit? Apparently, the default me. lunch of Studio Wit members is energy bars, and they all magically revive after eating one and then go back to Wow, they get a bad... <laughs> And they all mask revive after eating one and go back to work. It's kind of working my environment so far. So we can't go home. They just give you, all right, here's an energy bar, bro. It's a free energy bar. Aren't we so generous? Now take this and fucking go eat. Uh, a, a good comparison to this maybe is, you know, Amazon? Amazon, um, they're known for its really shitty working conditions. For software engineers, they pay really well. But anyways, they got also free bananas. The bananas are the equivalent of the fucking energy bars. Also shitty work conditions. It's just like, all right, here's a free banana. Now get back to work. To work. Yeah, I, I hope they're exaggerating because that sounds pretty horrible, not gonna lie. Sunrise Studio was founded in 1972 and revolutionized how anime was made. Code Geass, I hear Code Geass soundtrack. Instead of having a production revolve around a single person, they created the role of producers who invested in anime together to mitigate risk. This helped them create many classics like Cow Bebop, Pat Labor. Hold up, so the idea producers. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What's going on here? May was made. Instead of having a production revolve around a single person, they created the role of producers who- Hmm. Because like the reason I'm so interested in this is with the copyright shit, because I noticed that anytime people get striked, it's from these producers that own that copyright content. But the idea is, instead of one person having- You have multiple people managing it together, and that just makes it easier for them, I guess? Less like a liability? Let's, let's um- Less risk involved for one person because everyone else is kind of pitching in. Who invested in anime together to mitigate risk. This helped them create many classics like Cow Bebop, Pat Labor, Code Geass, and of course, yeah. the Gundam series. They've also formally been renamed to Bandai Namco Filmworks, but I'm gonna keep calling them Sunrise. As a studio, they're well known for their fluid animation sequence. Bandai Namco Filmworks. One thing I did notice is that Bandai Namco has so much rights like if i was just like testing like copyright shit just to kind of filter for which animes are you know getting fucked kodansha and king's records they go out for you a lot but i've noticed that a lot of the animes that we covered many of them are actually from bandai namco they just have a shitload man sunrise as a studio they're well known for their fluid animation sequences which gave them the nickname sunrise smooth honestly fire Sun cocktail like toei sunrise smooth have you ever heard that phrase Maybe this is a boomer phrase because these animes are fucking old. Because they are so big, they have a ton of smaller teams simultaneously working on their projects. Cool. Because of that, it's also a mixed bag. Sunrise as a studio is hugely- <laughs> Are these middle schoolers the fuck? This looks like a uh, Love Live something idol show, right? Influential. I mean, just take a look at how popular Gundam as a series is. A lot of that can be how attributed much, how much to money? studio- is How much money was that? It's hugely influential. I mean, just take a look at how popular- the Gundam franchise grossed over five billion dollars. I'm gonna assume USD and retail sales by two thousand, bro. By 2022, the annual revenue of the Gundam franchise was 101.7 billion yen and 44.2 billion, which was retail sales. That's crazy. Yeah. I wonder how much Beyblade makes, man. I bet Beyblade also makes a shitload. Gundam as a series is. A lot of that can be attributed to Sunrise's great anime adaptations of the franchise. In addition, they produce a ton of great classics and have the name recognition to pull in industry veterans. Basically, if it's Gundam, Sunrise is behind it? And that's not the only genre that they've revolutionized. Love Live was created by <laughs> Sunrise Studio as well and has pretty much made anime idol girls that much more popular. And in terms of working conditions, it seems that Sunrise is pretty good. Yo, Sunrise seems pretty chill. You know, they got code gear, they got a shitload of Gundams, and you know, they gave us an idol show too, and the working conditions are chill. They, Sunrise seems pretty pretty decent so far, right? It's their full-time employees well. Studio Gainax was founded in 1984, okay. and used to be considered the GOAT of anime studios. Their the first GOAT. big commercial success is considered to be Gunbuster, which is still a- Oh, these are some OG titles. I haven't seen these, but I have heard of these, right? Widely influential anime, but they would end up making something that was even greater. One of these university students who founded Studio Gainax was named Hideki Anno, and he would head Neon Genesis Evangelion. Damn! Damn! And Gainax is the former Trigger?
You saying Trigger went to Gynax or Gynax became Trigger? One way or the other, anyway. This guy ha is behind Evangelion. That's crazy. Yeah. This is one of the most influential anime of all time and is widely considered to be the studio's best and most popular work. And it allowed the studio to keep making great projects. Shows like Kare Kano, Fuli Kuli, and Gurren Lagann are- Damn, Fuli Kuli too? This is a crazy anime, I think. People are people talk about this like a NASA trip. I'm not too sure about the one on the left, but Gurren Lagann, I've heard about that a lot of times too. Results of these, and arguably some of the best anime to ever be created. My opinion. The reason Gynax shows are so good is because they're so creative. And a part of this idea is something called the Gynax ending, where a mm. Gynax show will end kind of unexpectedly or weirdly. Either this is done out of an artistic or creative decision, or sometimes it's just done. So they just fuck the ending up every time. Well, they don't fucking it up, but they just they just go crazy with it, and that's their spice. Done to meet deadlines. But the Gynax ending is known in the anime community as kind of a staple of the studio. But unfortunately, Gynax didn't last forever. Studio Trigger was founded by there it is. So Trigger is the outcome of Gainax. What happened to Gainax? They go bankrupt? Former Gainax staff members Hiroko Imashi and Masaki Otsuka in 2011. Okay. And it definitely feels like it's carried on that creative spirit that Gainax had. They immediately came out swinging with series like Kill la Kill and oh. movies like Little Witch Academia. Gurren Lagann, one of Gainax's- These are huge titles as well, right? His later works definitely served as the core inspiration for a lot of Trigger's early works. Trigger is also known for their crazy plot lines and fluid visuals, both of which complement each other perfectly. Oh, their storytelling Jesus. is often chaotic and comedic at the same what time. What the fuck is this show going on? What, what are these transformation scenes? We might have to check this out. Chaotic and comedic at the same time, which helps their exaggerated animations sell yes, that much the, more. That's crazy. This is being censored right now? Dude. The physics on this right now, look look at the physics on this right now. Chaotic and comedic at the same wait, time. Wait, wait, wait for it. Wait, which this, helps this, their this, exaggerated this, this. animation so that much shit, more. Holy shit, he had to blur it. Look how fast it's moving. If you want a good example of some of their recent works, Cyberpunk Edgerunners was absolutely amazing. Oh. And Dungeon Meshi is looking to be a more grounded. Trigger did Cyberpunk and Dungeon Meshi? Yo, Loki, I'm starting to think that maybe I should try to poke the bear at Dungeon Meshi. Well, maybe when season two announcement happens, we can try to reboot the series on my but channel. But still action-packed Trigger show. MAPPA is one of the most well-known animation studios today. There it is. The infamous MAPPA. Let's hear about it. Let's hear about the working conditions there for their amazing work on shows like Jujutsu Kaisen. They were founded in 2011 by seasoned anime producer Masayo Mariyama after he left Madhouse. Due to his connections, MAPPA was immediately interconnected with the anime industry. But in 2016, Mariyama left and was replaced by Manabu Utsoka, which was- What happened? Why did he leave? Is there a reason? I don't want to play with you no more. I don't know. Something happened. By Manabu Utsoka, which resulted in huge changes to the company. This guy- Maybe the reason why MAPPA is trash now in terms of working condition. Company's culture and goals. MAPPA as a studio now, more has a reputation of being very reckless. <laughs> They've grown extremely fast due to taking on a bunch of projects and still being able to deliver quality animation. But of course, we talk about anime, we have to talk about their work practices and yeah. how they get that quality animation in the first- It's like, all right, you want quality and you want quantity. Well, shit, that's like the forbidden pair, right? What are you sacrificing in order to get those two? the workers first place everything from the scheduling the work hours and even the culture has been criticized at mappa this became a trending topic during jujutsu kaisen's second season mm. animators on twitter revealed that their time at mappa was horrible one person who worked on the final part of attack on titan said that they finally got to go home after three days that's fucked up actually a prison cell bro you're stuck it off for three days like what kind of culture is that why do they all do that shit? Because it's their livelihood and they got the passion on the line, right? We already talked about it in the other video. Like MAPPA, what are you doing to the animators? Let them out, please! Unfortunately, MAPPA has zero to little reason to stop their practices because the properties that they're adapting are some of the biggest in the world. Like Vinland Saga Season 2, Chainsaw Man, and Attack on Titan. They also have a ton of connections within the industry, and that's why they're able to get so many talented animators in their studio despite the horrible pay and working conditions. I only hope that it can get better because MAPPA is truly working these animators into the ground. Kyoto Animations also- MAPPA sucks at the end of the day, people need to leave, and if they leave, maybe MAPPA will understand, just like Madhouse, and Madhouse got better, right? Madhouse was good, then it got bad, people left, made MAPPA, MAPPA got good, Madhouse realized, oh shit, what's going on, let's make our working conditions better, and now, things have flipped, right? Alright, next studio, Kyo Annie. I think they're known for a lot of Moe shows, right? Isn't Kyo Annie known for just like, cute girls doing cute things and kind of drama anime, like Hibiki Euphoria, isn't that Kyo Annie? 
also known as Kyo Annie, is very different from MAPPA, and it's considered to be the gold standard of oh. workplace culture for anime studios. Found it in the gold standard. I also have heard, wasn't there some kind of crazy, like, not a terrorist attack, but like, what, what, didn't their office get like bombed or like put on fire or something? The city of Kyoto in 1985, the married couple Yoko and Hideki Hata have, in my research, always fostered a great work culture. And unlike other studios, Kyo Annie employees are salaried and not freelancers. It is and you know what that means? You know what the difference between freelance and salary means? Well, obviously, salary means that you're not really paid on an hourly basis. It doesn't matter how long you work. You're, you're given a task and you complete that, right? Freelance contractors, it's a little bit, you know, now you don't have to offer benefits either. Like full-time employees are more like, I guess, more costly for the employer. So a lot of these shitty studios are trying to get around by using a lot of freelance and contract work and trying to minimize salary workers. You see this shit happen a lot in like, um, uh, minimum wage job places as well, where people will like give you just enough hours to be not considered full time so that they can skip out on benefits and stuff like that. Very fucked up. In addition, they even have training programs for young animators to work underneath supervisors and learn throughout their career. You might wow. be surprised to hear that most animators aren't even technically full time employees, but yeah, that is the industry standard. But KyoAni is very different. They have full time employees that even get benefits like maternity leave, which is insanely good and almost unheard of in the anime industry. And that's fucked up because maternity leave being unheard of in the anime, that should be the norm. Like, the standards for working conditions are so fucking low that even something as common as maternity leave is known as like a unicorn. That's insane. Now, why are they able to afford all of this? Well, usually anime studios make very little money, even if their anime does really well. The reason for this is that anime studios don't really fund anime themselves. Production committees do. Depending on the studio and the amount of producers involved, the amount of money that the studio actually sees after anime can be pretty variable. I guess more producers on behalf of the anime than you know, less money they make. And this is actually interesting because I was, I'm very fascinated in stuff like this because like quite often what I do is go here or, or even my anime list and go look at like, for example, like let's just click on a random fucking one, Last Crusade season two, right? I'll see like producers and I'll see like, why the fuck? Why the fuck is there like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separate fucking producers for this anime? I never really understood the logic around that, but the more I watch these videos, I guess it kind of makes more sense. MAPPA, for example, doesn't usually keep a large slice of the pie. KyoAni, on the other hand, he has a huge slice when they produce anime. But why is there a difference? The reason is very unique to KyoAni. In 2009, they started hosting the annual Kyoto Animation Awards in three categories. Original novels, manga, and scenarios. And a lot of their biggest work have come from these contests. The most notable ones being Chunibyo, or Violet Evergarden, oh. or even Free. This means that even- <laughs> This was the Yaoi swimming anime. I remember when this was trending and I'm like, this shit look gay as fuck. <laughs> But love Chini be on the They made this kill Annie? A lot of people are recommending me this anime too. It's so cunny. If the anime doesn't do amazing, they still make a majority of the revenue from that anime because they are licensing those projects. And because KyoAni doesn't have this pressure of external producers, they can also take way longer to work on their anime. That's why when you watch our shows like Fellow Evergarden or Hibiki Euphonium, you can see the love and care in every single shot. I mean, come on, genuinely, look at this animation. Yeah, that's the scene alone is already blowing out all the other fucking anime we're watching right now. And at the end of the day, the reason is, right? Producers, the more time that Kyoto Animation has because of the KyoAni Awards and having, you know, being like the only licensors or something, right? They can take their time and pump out good work and they'll also make good money to be able to pay their employees because lack of, you know, producer. But while doing that, you obviously sacrifice quantity. But for these other anime studios, they just don't give a fuck, right? They just don't give a fuck. They just want as many producers as possible, just keep out pumping out more money. Even if that means that this anime studio is going to get paid anything, it's just something's got to give, right? There must be some kind of compromise, right? There's, there's got to be some sort of compromise, but it's nice to see that studios like this still exist, but there's a bit of a plot twist that's about to happen, right? This is some of the best animation that the medium has to offer, and all the employees were treated fairly. This, this scene would have been an ironic meme. Right, the, the, the flames. This is fucking Kyoto studio right now. Employees were treated fairly. It's the best of both worlds. Their work culture and business model has been very successful. And I hope the best for them. And I hope more anime studios start to move in this direction. And they're also known for making people cry. I mean, if you watch Clanad or Canon, nope, not gonna you watch know that. that. Nope. That shit makes you cry, man. A1 Pictures was- Huh. He's not gonna talk about what happened. I guess maybe this video was made- I mean, it's made a month ago. I, I guess- for the, it, it, I, I, I guess- it just in good taste to kind of skip that information, but yeah, Kyoto Annie, I don't know. I, last time I heard of them in the news, it was trending arson, fire attack. 
Are they still making anime? I don't fucking know. A1 Pictures. It was 2019. Yeah, that shit was five years ago. Are they back? I don't know. Created by a former Sunrise staff producer in 2005. And they were pretty- Oh! Former Sunrise created A1 Pictures. A1 Pictures makes fucking great anime. Yeah, that's right. Shibiki Sound Euphorium Season 3. They're, they're back. They're back. Fucking A1 Pictures. They have that touch. I don't know. Most A1 Pictures anime I've seen has been just fantastic, right? Pretty interesting because their works are very variable in terms of animation quality. Usually it depends on if the project has the budget and if the production schedule itself is good, but they are well known in the anime community for consistently releasing a ton of anime, more specifically light novel adaptations. A lot of these don't really hold up in the long term, although it's not to say that they never release good looking shows. You know, Sword Art Online, Solo Leveling, and Kaguya Sama all yeah. look really good, but at the same time, their releases include Aero Manga Sensei, which is like, eh. What? People love their manga sense, didn't they? I mean, people, it was so fucking... It went viral because of the nature of the content, right? But was the anime actually good? And also, in 2018, a... Cloverworks! Cloverworks is a new studio that I've recently just, like, been enlightened of. They make some crazy good anime, bro. ...section of A1 Pictures broke off into Cloverworks Studios, which is... That's why Cloverworks is also cracked. Because, like, what is the most recent Cloverworks anime that we're watching right now? That's fucking insane. It's not Roshidere. Roshidere is Dogakobo. What was the Cloverworks anime? Was it Elusive Samurai? I think it might be Elusive Samurai. Yeah, Elusive Samurai. Windbreaker too, exactly. Windbreaker had a, had a polish on that as well, yeah. Still managed by the same Aniplex parent company, but tends to have a much higher benchmark of animation quality within their shows. It's also worth noting that A1 Pictures Bochi. has a pretty Bochi bad reputation of overworking their employees. In 2014... A wait, 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 what did you say? Which, which studio does? Employee quality within their shows. It's also worth noting that A1 Pictures has a pretty bad reputation of overworking their employees. <laughs> uh, it is what it is, right? This is a, it's a common thing. This, it seems like so far, Sunrise is chill, and KyoAni is chill. KyoAni is the best. And everyone else is just sweatshops. In 2014, a 28-year-old employee at A1 Pictures worked over 600 hours a month for three Jeez. years. And... 600? Whoa, we just talked about the example. There's a 720 later. The, the, the new rec. Because uh, like before we had like 390 something, right? Now it's 600 and someone else is going to get break this record too later? Ended up committing suicide. This has forever stained the reputation. Shame on you, A1 Pictures. Sign Saru was founded in 2013 Fuck. by famous anime director. But again, right? Everybody just cares about the end product. And even if like a suicide happened. Like, A1's pictures, it's fucked. It, it's just fucked. Director Masaki Yuasa and animator and Yong Choi, who had a long history with Yuasa. Their first work as a studio was actually an episode of Adventure Time, but their first series was Ping Pong the Animation. It oh, that's a really famous anime. For its unique animation that people think is garbage, but it's actually decent and the story is amazing, right? Science Saru, I've actually never heard of them until now. In addition, they don't really care about the nationality of their employees. Instead, choose them based on their skill. This means based? that a ton of Science Saru employees aren't even Japanese. As a studio, Science Saru is known for being out of the box. They experiment with really insane color palettes and are not afraid to push the envelope with series like Devilman Crybaby, which has tons of gore. Oh, that's pretty recent too. Gay sex scenes and a whole lot more that I can't- Whoa, a gay sex scene? They animated a gay sex scene in what really? Huh. Which anime was that? This is Devil May Cry? Sure. <laughs> not not Devil May Cry, but you know, fucking Devil Man Cry Baby. A lot of their weird energy does come from Masaki Yuasa, but Science Aura recently released Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, which is just as weird despite not being directed by Yuasa at all. If you want some more Science Aura recommendations, I would highly recommend Devil Man Cry Baby, Ping Pong the Animation, and Keep Your Hands Up Azuka. Also, watch out for Dandadan, which is coming out soon. There it is. Dan da dan, that's how you say it. This is the Shonen series that's gonna be incredibly hype, I think. There's a lot of interest to it. There is this and Sakamoto-san. I think a lot of people are expecting for the Shonen Jump series and hopefully this anime is good. We'll see. Doing it is in by Science Sorrow. I'm really excited for this one. It's romance? I thought this is a Shonen series. It's part of Shonen Jump. There's a romance element to it, but it's just a Shonen Jump series, right? Studio Shaft was founded in 1975. Ayo! Hey, what that toothbrush doing in there? It's a toothbrush sheen, hold the fuck up. And are known for their experimental visual styles. Some popular example of Shaft anime are Madoka Magica or the Monogatari oh. series. You yeah, Monogatari series, right? They're the most... 
I mean, I say Madoka is more well known than Monogatari series, even though Monogatari is also huge, right? It's, a, it's like a huge fucking franchise. You got so many different series. But Madoka, isn't Madoka just also like an OG cult classic? You can immediately tell that you're watching a Studio Shaft production due to the work of directors Akiyuki Shinbo, Shino Numa, and Tatsuya Oishi. Basically, Shaft animation is this. Just waifus just tilting their head up and talking. It's, it's just that, 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 that is Monogatari when I see clips of it. Who formed what is known as Team Shinbo. This Team Shinbo led to very distinct stylistic ideals with whatever project that they were working on. Sometimes okay. they would use sharp color contrast, high paced jump cuts, and even place real world objects within the animation itself. All of this gives Studio Shaft anime a really surrealist feeling, which I think is super cool. The Monogatari series also features iconic moments like the Shaft head tilt, which is <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's, this is exactly what I was referencing just now. Actually confirmed by Team Shinbo to be a Studio Shaft staple. Although Shaft has lost a lot of their core staff over time, including the disbandment of Team Shinbo, oh. they still produce popular shows like March Comes In Like a Lion and Quintessential Quintuplets. I heard decent stuff about this anime, but rip Team Shinbo. They're the ones that was responsible for the head tilt. Salute. Does that mean, is Monogatari still getting animated? Is there a new Monogatari series coming out? Does that mean Monogatari is GG if there's more? Or is, is Shinbo still doing that? You foldable? You fold table? All right, y'all know it's studio you foldable, right? You you know you studio you foldable. What are they known for? Movie to your animation. I don't know how the fuck they do it, and we're about to learn. But everything they touch, the polish is insane. They just have movie to your animations on every fucking episode. They have like unlimited money. How? What are they, what are they doing? Well, Ufotable was founded in 2000 by Hikaru Kondo after okay. he split from Telecom Animation Film. They're well known for their strong relationship with the game company Type Moon, and they've adapted tons of Fate series, right? That's why they did like all the Fate animes too. One of their games, like. Not all of it, but the significant ones like Zero and I think like Unlimited Blade Works and the movie as well, right? To Heaven's Feel or some shit. The Fate series and Garden of Sinners, as well as working with them to create animations for their in-game cutscenes. Ufotable is most notable for their incredibly vibrant and colorful mm. animation. As I'm sure many of you have seen with Demon Slayer, arguably Ufotable is the best studio in the industry at combining 3D computer graphics with traditional 2D sakuga. Like, like again, like... There's 3D computers like a CGI with the 2D. How are they doing? Why are they so fucking good? How can no one can compete with them? It's just the talent that they have there and they treat them correctly. Because like no other studio, I, don't, I think even like, well, I, I think some other studios come close. Like I, I think Cloverworks, Elusive Samurai stuff, I think even Wistoria is pretty good. But it just feels like Youthfotable is still dominantly number one. Like KyoAni, Ufotable hires a lot of their employees full-time and is regarded as one of the better animation companies to work for. Nice. I'm not really sure where they're getting all that money from, but yeah, wait a second, they committed tax fraud? Yeah, this is something- Whoa! You know what? You committing tax fraud to pay your employees well and make sure that you know your product is good and your people are taken care of? I'm, I'm a fan of tax fraud now, baby. That I actually didn't know about until I made this video, but apparently Hikaru Kondo refused to pay around $4 million in taxes. <laughs> and also the Japanese government made a report noting that Ufoto was suspected of misappropriating funds from- <laughs> Kondo was sentenced to 20 months in prison, but the sentence was suspended for three years. The report noted that Ufoto is suspected of supposedly misappropriating funds raised from a charity. Oh, fuck. From a charity? You fucking took advantage of charity fund, charity auction for the 2011 Tohoku earthquake? Oh, Jesus Christ. That is evil. Uh, Tokyo Regional Taxation Bureau, which is like the IRS of Japan, conducted a search in Ufotable's offices earlier in March that year as a part of an investigation, but did not ending up filing charges. So, hey, I, I, I mean, all you got are allegations. All you got is accusations? My man Kondo ain't serving no time. He is squeaky clean. <laughs> Who are his lawyers, bro? A charity auction for the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. They never ended up filing charges, but Kondo resigned. And because of this, he is now Kondo facing up to 20 months in prison. Top G move, okay. if you ask me. Studio. <laughs> Top G. <laughs> Top G. <laughs> okay, now he's facing up to 20 months in prison. Okay. Kondo is pretty much GG, but... um. Well, well, okay, so that happened. Let's say, you know, the tax evasion and misappropriating funds for a cherry. Let's say that happened. But how is it still being funded? How are all their projects still being funded? Well, because of the success of Demon Slayer, I guess, right? I don't know. It just feels like Ufotable has just an unlimited amount of budget. 
it's like unfair. If I ever wanted to work for a studio, after hearing this video so far, and we still have a couple more studios, and I know there's a part two, I think Studio Ufotable would definitely be in my like top three pick. Like if you wanted to be an animator for an animation company or like a studio, Ufotable is looking real fucking nice, man. If you ask me. Studio Bones was founded in 1988 by former Sunrise staff members who were bored on working in mecha anime. <laughs> okay, Sunrise is now creating Bones as well. Uh, okay, Bones, yeah. Mob, Mob Psycho. Mob Psycho was pretty good, right? And want to try more creative projects. Studio Bones is most well known for their insanely <gasps> well FMA. executed fight and action sequences. In fact, you could argue. Oh, they did My Hero Academia as well. Hero Academia, My uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Argue that they have some of the best 2D sakuga in the industry right now. A huge reason that they're known for this is because of Yutaka Nakamura, known as one of the Yutaka Nakamura. Remember this face. He's the goat. The goats in animation. He's popularized techniques like the Yutapon Cube, which is where debris forms cubes to show the destruction. You can see the influence of Yutapon. Debris forms cues to show a destruction seems like such a simple and obvious thing, but it is genius. Cubes across the industry. I mean, even in the Legend of Korra, I've seen Yutapun cubes made for debris. And even now, huh. Nakamura continues to innovate at Bones. Because of this, they've created some absolute- Yo, that Mob Psycho fight animation went fucking crazy. Bangers over the years. Like how it up the movie, the Full Metal Alchemist series, Mob Psycho 100, yeah. or in High School Host Club. What the fuck? All you got Cowboy Bebop classic, Full Metal Alchemist fucking classic, Mob Psycho classic. Well, I see Oran High School Host Club is also a classic, but it's just like, <laughs> then it just went to BL, man. It just went to Yaoi. My Hero Academia, I mean, much more. Just go through yeah. Bones' catalog. It is impeccable. They got a huge, huge roster. It looks like Bones is pretty good, right? We talked about how Sunrise is chill, right? Sunrise is chill. Bones is obviously, you know, a branch off of Sunrise people that got bored of Gamecha, so Bones is looking like another studio that's pretty good. Studio Orange was founded by 3D CG animator Eiji Inomoto Orange. in 2004, who was well known for his works in Ghost in the Shell and Zoids, specifically the 3D animation part. Zoids. Yo! Battle Zoids? Hold the fuck up! I might have seen a couple episodes of this when I was a kid! On TV! Battle Zoids? This is suddenly bringing old memories! I don't remember ever finishing the story, but like, as a kid just watching TV, I think I remember this shit. The studio mainly did outsource 3D animation until 2013, when they started doing co-production with other studios to make shows like Black Bullet. But then Orange started making completely new anime, with shows uh, like Land of the Lustrous being met with great critical reception for action- Oh, this is that Hoshino Kuni anime that people tell me to watch a lot. Land of the Illustrious. It does look really pretty. We having good CG. Studio Orange is so you- It's just like a CG anime only, right? The studio is like- we doing everything CG. Unique in their approach to 3D animation that I can genuinely tell that they understand the strengths of CG and how to play into them. Usually in 2D anime, CG is just kind of thrown. Don't do Berserk like this, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Own in there when an object is difficult to animate and it doesn't usually blend all that well. Meanwhile, Studio Orange makes sure that all of their models feel like they are gen- Like, I remember this fucking scene. It looked like a fucking VTuber model. Like, straight up look at me. It looks like I'm just moving like this. Like, this dude here was moving like... It was so sad. I was like, what the fuck? I heard the manga is a legend. How the, how the fuck is the anime so bad? I feel like they are genuinely alive instead of just stiff figurines. The character expressions Damn. genuinely feel magical and alive, almost Disney-like, but with that anime touch. And this is because they don't shy away from using 2D animation to first sketch out what the facial expressions might look like. Using oh. both mediums like this results in a product that is greater than the sum of its parts. And you can see this clearly in their newest series, Trigun Stampede, where Vash's facial expressions and movements just feel so fluid and alive, I genuinely love them. Their 3D animation doesn't make me gross out or wish that the studio had more budget to just make it 2D instead. Yeah, I feel like as much as I shit on 3D or CGI and enduring my anime reactions, it's, it's not because CGI is bad, but because how it's implemented. There's a lot of whiplash factor of losing immersion, especially in failure frame when you go from 2D to 3D so abruptly. But like just committing hardcore to just all 3D anime and like looking at these clips here of like Landed Illustrious, it looks actually really good. It looks amazing. Because the anime genuinely looks better in 3D, and I think it's a sign of more 3D animation to come. Before I end this video, I want to let you all know that I stream on Twitch a lot. Check out my Twitter for updates. Guys, please go give Mr. Ari Kendo like on his video. Go check out his channel if you haven't checked it out. I know there's a part two to this. This is a very informative video to get my monkey brain understanding like 
you know, what these studios really are. I, I know common stereotypes of some studios, but pretty cool to see other more lore. I know there's a part two, and we will cover that shortly. I don't know when, but shortly.